the historic Beverly collection. Oops, ah, let me just let me just get rid of that. Some of you know the historic Beverly collection is especially strong in photographic history with images of Beverly people, places, and events from the middle of the 19th century up until the present. Of particular note are images of the United Shoe, houses in all of Beverly's neighborhoods, and planes, trains, and cars of all kinds. Having a visual record of the past is just as important as the written record. So I'm really delighted to welcome our speaker for this evening. Stanley Joseph Foreman is a photojournalist who over his who over a four year period won the Pulitzer Prize three times while working at the Boston Herald American. Foreman studied photography at the Benjamin Franklin Institute of Technology in Boston. After graduation, he was a cameraman for a political campaign, Edward W. Brooks campaign for the US Senate before joining the Boston Herald. Foreman won his first two Pulitzer Prizes consecutively, the first photographer to do so. In 1976, he won in the category of spot news photography for his sequence of photographs showing a young woman and a two-year-old girl falling from a collapsed balcony during a local fire. The next year, he was co-winner in the same category for the Soiling of Old Glory, a photograph depicting Black lawyer Ted Landsmark being assaulted by a man wielding a flagpole as a weapon. Foreman's third Pulitzer Prize came in 1979 when the photography staff of the Boston Herald American won in the feature photography category for its coverage, coverage of the blizzard of 1978. Foreman has been a Neiman Fellow. He has worked as a cameraman, he worked as a cameraman at WCVB since 1983 and retired at the end of 2021. He currently chases news as a stringer with the sounds from the scanners as music to his ears. If you don't follow him on Instagram, you should. Not Instagram, Facebook. I haven't done Instagram and Twitter. Uh, Twitter, right, Twitter, sorry, Twitter. His, his sunrise photos are a really wonderful way to start your day. Please welcome Stanley Foreman. Thank you. Thank you. Just a little, a little, a little uh, I'll go to that. Anyway, when I was eight years old, I grew up in Revere near Shirley Ave, if anybody knows, and my father was playing with the radio and he was able to tune in Revere Police. And that was it. It was my music for the rest of my life. Um, and in 19, well, you've heard everything, where, how I got where, whatever. Anyway, this picture, this is my book that I wrote in 19, in 19 2012, when I was out injured. And um, I was out injured with a, uh, what did I have? Toward the quad tendon, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, and I did a book, and uh, that, that's the other book. Anyway, this is July. Okay, come on. Oh, come on. We're just working. Oh. All right. You got issues here. I don't know what happened. Try not. It was working. It was working. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, I keep going too fast. This is uh, July 22nd, 1975, a very hot summer's day. I started my day that day. I started my day having to go to the, uh, four landmarks to shoot the uh, Boston skyline. I went to Logan Airport. I went to the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Bunker Hill Monument, 294 steps. I promise you, I couldn't climb them anymore. <laughs> um, uh, the, the Prudential Tower and the top of uh, uh, not Fing the Custom House. Anyway, later, about four o'clock that afternoon, I was in the newsroom and a call came over the scanner about a fire on, at 129 Marlboro Street. Now, I, I mean, I know the city, I know uh, approximately when Marlboro Street would be. And they started yelling about people trapped in the building. I ran down to my car. I went up. Anybody know the Boston area, Harrison Ave? Yeah. Anyway, you go up Harrison Ave, there's a fire engine, a firehouse there near the hospital, engine three. And I followed engine three right to the fire. I went to the back of the building. And when I got to the back of the building, I saw I saw this. This was the scene. This is a, a firefighter, Robert O'Neill. Tiara Jones is the baby. And Diana Bryant is the uh, godmother. Firefighter O'Neill told the young woman that the ladder's coming up, he would climb up and then he would reach down. There'd be another firefighter coming up. 
he would reach down, she'd pass him the baby, and then he'd pass the baby down, and then he'd get her, her up. In the meantime, Ted, uh, no, uh, what's his name, the traffic guy? Um, Joe, Joe Green. Green. Yeah, Joe Green landed on the roof of the burning building. And he went over, this is O'Neill Hall, O'Neill tells it, he said, went over and I looked up and I said, this bearded, shirtless man on the roof of a burning building that said to me, I have a helicopter, hand me the kids. He, well, he didn't, he didn't believe him, obviously. As he's reaching up, all of a sudden, everything happened. The fire escape collapsed and uh, um, O'Neill held on and, and the uh, Diana and, and uh, Tiara Jones fell. He, he, he was like an arm wrestler holding on to the, O'Neill was like an arm wrestler, wrestler. As they fell, I remember turning right about here and thinking to myself, I didn't want to see them hit. I, and I got this one frame and I turned around and it worked out they fell behind a fence. So I wouldn't have seen them anyway. This is a scene afterward when they took uh, Diana, Diana down the street and they were trying to save her. She died and she died from the fall, Tiara Jones. Did not. She's fine. This is the same building. This is uh, about two years previous. This is 129 Marlboro Street. I was working the overnight shift, and it was a call for a fire. And um, her name is Elizabeth Snow. And they rescued. This is the same building. There was a series. It was an arson, a building that had had arson many t uh, enough times. And they rescued her. I mean, I, I wouldn't even paid attention. It would have just been another ladder rescue. But after I made the uh, fire escape collapse, I realized it was the same, build, same building. This is an abandoned baby in Dorchester. I was working the overnight shift. I was my favorite shift. They let me work at one night a week. I'd go in Thursday nights at, at midnight and work and work till I went home. And uh, sometimes early, sometimes late. And this was an abandoned baby. The call came in for an abandoned baby on a, a doorstep in Dorchester. I got there before the police and I went up. And I went up and I opened up the the jacket because I, I, you know, it was a, if, it, if it wasn't breathing, I wasn't doing anything. I opened it up enough to get a picture because the baby was breathing. Hmm. That was page one. <clears throat> this is Harvard Yard in the sixties. Harvard. We're all laughing. I have no idea. Is it, could a Zoom be coming in? I don't know. Anyway, BU, this is BU, Bay State Road, also in the 60s. BU, Bay State Road. It, it was fun back then. I mean, as a young guy, I was, I was in my 20s, and every day you found out which school you were going to during the protest, and they say, which one you want to go to? If you went to Brandeis, you got a breakfast, whether kosher or not kosher, you had your church. If you went to Harvard, you were lucky to get a cup of coffee. M MIT gave you some little sandwiches. BU were pretty generous, and we didn't go to BC that often. This is my first big story. This is uh, b -b -b Christmas, December 26th or 27th. Just a month after I started, I had just gotten, my father and I had gone to the Bruins game, and I got home. And I had the radio on, of course, and it came in about a, a Bud Liner crash, Bud Liner train and the uh, a tanker truck in a Chelsea Everett line. I was the first photographer there. I was there with my father. And um, I actually never got over this. This was, this is all, I think like 12 people died. It was, it was, it was awful. But it was the first big story. I get in there in the morning and everybody's shaking my hand because I had page one, page two, page three. And it was a, it was a big deal for a, a new photographer. This is a funny story. This is, well, it's not funny, but it is a funny story. <laughs> this plane aborted flight at Logan on a, I don't know what day of the week it was. And in those days, you all lined up at the, would be the South Gate, if you know where uh, the hotel is on the right there, the Hyatt. And, and you get on there and you wait to be taken out by the Massport to anything. And all the photographers are lined up and we're all waiting. And I said to all the photographers, this thing there, I says, I, my very good friend is a, was an arson the chief photographer at the Boston Fire. I says, in a few minutes, uh, I'm going to be getting, there's going to be a little red car coming by and I'm going to get in and see you. And they all laughed at me, a little red car comes by and I go out there and I was the first one out there. And then about a half hour later, the bus comes and brings all the other photographers. And I, I was drifting or something. The ladder was down, there was nothing there. And the AP photographer says, hey, finally beat you. I finally beat you. I says, Take a look at the paper the next day. 
<laughs> this is the ocean, a new ocean house in Swampscott. Anybody remember when it's glam glamour, the grandeur? Uh, this is an ad Nikon did with me. I was that was uh, <laughs> that was had to be seventy eight because I had my leg in a cast. I had torn my Achilles tendon. I like them to do an ad with me now, but I don't use Nikon cameras, so I don't think it's going to happen. <laughs> this is a cat on a roof, on a roof on a pole in Roxbury, and the woman called Channel Five, and because Channel Five called the electric company, the electric company came up. The cat was way up there. The cat was way up there. The uh, the electric guy had this long pole, just kept taking on, and he whacked the top of the thing. He came running down and went in the house. <laughs> we saved the cat. This is a coyote on the Charles during a, uh, a, a snowstorm. He, he actually got captured or taken into custody or whatever you want to call it, saved. Several hours later, when he showed up, this is this is by the museum, not to be by uh, Cambridge side, Cambridge Parkway, and then he went over the other side, and that's where they picked him up. It's 1966, South Boston. I was covering the parade. I happened to be up on uh, someone's porch, up on the second floor, shooting, and all of a sudden they showed up. Ran down and got this picture, Jackie. They, they were all they came all flew into Hyannis when Joe was dying. John John, Jackie, Teddy, bumper cars, kind of funny. <laughs> Teddy, the day before the first day of busing in Boston, they had a big rally and um, he got called out and he made his way back to his office. The family, after Joe died. Teddy and the sisters. Am I going too fast, too slow? Can you hear me up back? Yeah. Okay. Right okay. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Judge. <laughs> you hear me, Judge? Uh. <laughs> Chelsea, day after the big fire, 73. This is a uh, Wednesday night. I was off. I was actually on vacation. And um, I went and played, it's kind of a funny story. I went and was playing poker with some friends uh, from, the, from the Channel 5 and the Globe. And as I was leaving, I, was, I said, I'm going cruising with some people. And um, I said on the way out the door, I said, I'm going to go win another Pulitzer. I didn't. But anyway, <laughs> I was coming up Columbia Road on the way home. And after I cruised for a while, and I could see the, the fire. I didn't even hear the fire come in. I could see the fire. I jumped out of the car. And there was a, a cop, woman, child. It was an arson. Uh, the father uh, threw the child down. He couldn't get the woman to jump, so he pushed her off. I, I always thought that if I had, you know, I'm sorry, anyway, if she had turned this way instead of the way she's turning, I might have won the bullet. <laughs> what are you laughing for? <laughs> and this is the. He, he, he jumped off and broke his, no, she broke her ankle. He was okay. Carried him out, carried everybody out. She had a broken ankle or leg. I think I have a picture of the, I know. Perks of the job. This is the Shriners, Christmas at the Shriners. Christmas in the summer. No, I must've been in the winter. I got to go out. Saving a life in Dorchester. Mouth to mouth saved the life. Another one. These are both at the uh, the old Columbia Road, uh, Col uh, Columbia Point uh, buildings, the old high rises. This was a, uh, I don't know, Thursday morning. I was on the way to, uh, excuse me, I, I'm getting warm here. I'm going to take my sweatshirt off. I'll be ready. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> this was a, uh, I was on my way into work and I realized I got the Dudley station. I was going from Rosendale. I was going in the office to print some pictures. It's like four o'clock in the morning. And all of a sudden I heard the car. I put, I, I hadn't had, I didn't have the ra radios on. And then I put them on the fire came in, in the South end. I got there and I saw these um, two kids sitting on a fire engine 
just sitting there. Their house was burning. And I said to them, you okay? Blah, 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 blah. And they said to me, my mother and my brother are in there. And this was the brother that they took out. He, okay. he, he didn't make it. The uh, curly statue. Is that distracting the thing at the top? Because I can't get it out, so. <laughs> okay. My first uh, rescue with a 35 millimeter camera. This was uh, a Sunday in, um, in Revere, uh, Beachmont section near Suffolk Downs T station. This is a MIT, thought you could cross the water. MIT student, tried to cross the Charles. This is another genius. This is the guy in Salem. Last year, um, the flats, what do you call the flats there in- uh, North River? Yeah, the North River, he was out uh, fishing and the mud, the mud caught him. <laughs> Arthur. Oh. That was his 75th birthday. They gave him a, uh, they, obviously they gave him a fire engine. <laughs> this is uh, the old Essex Hotel, which is at South Station, next to South Station. It's not there anymore. And the only reason I show you this picture, the cop who happens to be a friend of mine said to this woman, you're wasting your time. You won't even get hurt. You're not up high enough. <laughs> she came in the window. <laughs> yeah, pop, good friend of mine. Welcome home, my son. This, his name is Tom Lovett here, uh, 67 or 68, 69 at Logan Airport. When you could go out on the runway, they had us. It was an East Boston family, and uh, I was invited out. We were invited out, and um, I, I, because of Facebook and stuff like this, we communicate. He's, he's a friend of mine on uh, on Facebook. Perks. My news hound. And, and, that, and that's Debbie's dog, Abby, and the backseat is Glossy. Glossy was a smart dog. She, she was sleeping. <laughs> this is the arson ring back in, was it 82, 83? This is a night in Cambridge with a, uh, a little building on fire. This was a big, big night of fires. This was uh, in June of 82. And I had just picked up my friend and my fellow photographer, Richie Suskin from Channel 7. We just got a cup of coffee at Symphony Hall and this first fire came in. This was nine alarms. And I got the, the funny thing is I handed him my little camera, uh, a little camera, I wanted him to take a picture of me. And I, uh, you know, nice picture. I didn't have any film in the camera. <laughs> this is the chief. Uh, he was a really nice guy. He is a really nice guy. Now see this woman here? When we went up, this is later on in okay. Uh, later on in the morning, this is like four o'clock in the morning. We we were cruising around the Jamaica Way, and a call came in for a dumpster fire, and it was a building on the corner of uh, uh, Hyde Square. If anybody knows where that is, and and uh, JP anyway, near JP Licks. Anybody know where JP Licks is in in Jamaica Plain? Oh, well, it's right there. And <laughs> this woman. We were at the door and we're banging and, and heavy black smoke was coming out. And we said, there's a woman on the second floor and um, the, the EMTs went up and got her. But when he broke the window, the door, a big black smoke came out. And this, this EMT that's, that's gasping there, he went down like a boom. And I said to my, Richie, I says, well, I picked him up and I put him on my shoulders. I couldn't do that now anymore. Richie had his legs. I had put him on my shoulders and I brought him to the to the uh, ambulance. They rescued the woman. That's her there. But on the way there, I kept thinking, where's all the other photographers? Well, <laughs> might have rescued. Just a fire, someone, a firefighter getting out. This is a Saturday night murder, homicide in Hyde Park. And I used to work Saturday nights. And I went up there and I got this sh shot in the window and then every, all the other photographers, the other state, there was, it was newspaper time and they all showed up, but they had pulled the shade. It was a nice gift. Oh, this is right up uh, around the corner from my house. What street is that? Off of, off of Grove. Yeah, the call came in. I heard it. The call came in uh, where we live and I ran up there. I, I got there right away. Construction, right? Yeah, it was under construction. They said, suppose, supposedly, yeah. it, it was in the fireplace. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Ed Brooke, this would be uh, 1966. 
1966, Columbus Day in East Boston. Brooke and Nixon, better times. <laughs> this is the arson, the arson in um, Rileside. Did you first go over, remember when the guy was running around in, in Rileside lighting fires one night? Well, he was. And it, was, it was a Sunday night, and uh, I got there. This name, oh, oh, I knew that was coming. This man's name is Walter. I wouldn't show it if he was dead, you know, come on. His name is Walter Boswell, I was told. And I, it was Broadway Station. I ran down. I got one shot off, and the lieutenant told me to get the hell out of there. And I was told that Walter, they didn't know why he was in that position, but uh, they said he spent 65 days in the hospital. I never, I, I don't know what, I, eventually, but they told me he could walk. This is Bridgewater. I get called at like three o'clock in the morning that there was a hostage situation in, uh, in Bridgewater. And is that point of working? No, I'm not having a good night. Oh, maybe I picked the right one. No. Nope. Oh, there. Oh, there, yeah. Anyway, you can see him. There's a masked man. There's a masked man. He's got a mask. He did a robbery. And for, I don't remember the circumstances completely, but he grabbed this woman as a hostage. And he was walking her all over the place, fire, police. Everybody was lined up waiting for him. And then all of a sudden I heard, at one point she said she had to go to the bathroom and the firefighters took a door off a gas station so he could let her in the bathroom while he held the hostage. And then all of a sudden I could hear the police. You couldn't get this close nowadays, but well, maybe I could. Anyway, all of a sudden I heard them say, it's time, I'll shoot him. And they shot him. But so they're all lined up, you know, all the cops. And I was young and, and stuff like that. I climbed in underneath. You see how low that is? I got to lower everybody, climbed in underneath and I started yelling, get that mask off, get that fucking mask off. And they took the mask off. <laughs> this is the woman. Uh, this is um, Columbia Point. As a matter of fact, on this one here, I went out back and I saw them and I said to the cop, you want me to go outside and you want me to tell them that there's people up there? And they said, yeah. And I'm going running out and I had a, a speed bump. <laughs> but I made it. And I told the, the firefighters and everything where they were and, and they carried them out. I don't, I, I think they knew, but I'll take credit. <laughs> this is the Copley Square Hotel. Copley, Copley Square Hotel fire well, it was the same day as um, uh, Three Mile Island. And the only reason I mentioned that, the editor of the paper was so pissed off because there's this great headline about Three Mile Island, and he had to go to this instead Copley Plaza fire. I got there from Rosendale, and I got the last ladder rescue. This is the Bruins, 1969, year before they won the cup. And um, the fellow that wrote, did the poster is from Dorchester. And I don't know, 20 years ago, 30, anyway, someone, his daughter reached out to me when she saw her. He said, my father did that. And I tried to get an interview, with him, but he didn't, he, he wouldn't. He talked to me by email, whatever it was. He says, I didn't even know what a Bruin was. They said, oh, to draw a beer. Bobby Orr had asked Leo, D. Leo Monaghan. That mean anything to anybody? No. Great sport, great hockey writer. <laughs> and uh, it did call, I was covering the practice. Bobby Orr against Detroit, Roger Crozier. And I, I, my assignment that night was just to follow everything he did. And he did. He scored a goal from the blue line. 1969, this is all the fights. Great. It was great. It was really the first hockey game I ever covered. And there was the playoffs. They, the Bruins won uh, 11 to nothing. This is the, the night that Bobby Orr got uh, whacked. Teddy Green, Jim Dorsey, Busick. You see Busick? 19 is McKenzie, Cheevers, Johnson. The ref is Ashley. Ken Harrelson. Um, he had what he broke an ankle or whatever it was, 75, 74, whatever it was. I went to he he did like the camera. <laughs> and I went to the um St. Elizabeth's because we got a tip he was coming out, and I says, Hey, how about make a believe you're throwing the cast? So he so he did. <laughs> Red Sox 1975. I think there was an all it was a playoffs or the all-star game, I forget. 
TC, Aaron Yastrzemski. This is um, uh, Mike Teresa's wife after he threw the ball to Bucky Dent. I was just floating up. Ooh. A little. I was just floating around, and uh, I was ended up behind the uh, the the, uh, bar, the batter's box, and he threw it, and I turned around, and there she was, and I took this picture. This is the Yankees. This is a, is that tent? I think it is. I didn't even know I had these pictures till about a year ago, and I was looking through my stuff. I did not remember going. It was a bad memory, so I didn't remember. But look at that, Yogi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, Mr. Jackson, Babe Ruth, he thought. 03, their first World Series. Look at that. We had the best Christmas card that year. Everybody had a Red Sox Christmas card. <laughs> Celtics, um, I think it was 82 or 83 when they beat uh, Philly. And here's when they won the championship. I think this is, I believe this is when uh, Larry Bird said Moses eats shit at City Hall. Yeah. I think that was a series. Moses, Moses Ball. Yeah. yeah. Here's our back. The Pope, 1979 in Dorchester. Lynn, the big fire in Lynn. I forget what, what it was at, 78 or 73. 83. I was still shooting still, so oh yeah, probably eighty-two. Yeah, this was South Boston. Um, it was Columbus Day, as a matter of fact, and I was in the office, and the call came in for people trapped. And this young fellow climbed out the window and uh, made it to safety. Four members of his family died: his mo mother and, and and siblings. This was a uh, a night. This is uh, where um, Whole Foods is now. Was the Herald. And I just come to work on a Thursday night and they were following this car, this Lincoln stolen car, and it just kept coming to me. I was gonna go out, it started the Blue Hills, it just kept coming to me, coming to me. It just, and all of a sudden it showed up across the street and I ran out and the cops had got their guns out and I yelled, photographer flash, because I was afraid the flash was gonna make them shoot me. <laughs> Combat zone, Kenny Jameson, good friend of mine. <clears throat> This is um, this is uh, the soaring of old glory. What led up to it? I had arrived when the uh, students had just had their cookies and milk with uh, Louise Day Hicks in the uh, in the um, yeah uh, city council chambers, and then they were coming out when I got there. And as they came out, there was a group of students from um, a school in Roslyn. They were black, mostly black students, and and a, 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 a fight started. And then all of a sudden, I looked up, and there was who is now, I know who it is now, there's two black men, Ted Lansmark's the one on the right, and I just started shooting. I ran down and just started shooting. Now in October, I'm working with a uh, group out of Cleveland. I met Ted, uh, Joseph Rakes, the perpetrator, for the first time. Well, he, he met me, what did he say? He said, I guess we've met twice now. Couldn't have been nicer. Invited us into his home and talked. Of course, you know, he, he objects to the, uh, the way it's been explained, but, you know, that's life. And this is where my camera, all of a sudden, it wasn't um, transporting the film correctly, but I could hear it in my head, my ears, I should say, and that's before hearing aids. And I could hear it wasn't transporting correctly, and I switched to single frame. And there's the winner. Okay. Oh. You're not done. You're not going home yet. I got lots more. What time is it? It's uh, eleven thirty at night. Keep on rolling, Stan. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Oh. <laughs> anyway, this was a washerman from the Glow, and I sent him a note and said I, I, that was kind of original. And um, 
He sent me that. I have that picture. This is, and I sent him the picture. I made the. Uh, a tri they spell my name wrong, but I made the trivia on on an air airplane. <laughs> Brooks, once again. Kate Jackson and Andrew Stevens, nineteen seventy eight. We had a tip that uh, Kate Jackson was Charlie's Angels. And um, we got a tip that she was at Logan Airport, uh, getting a, going to the Cape to uh, going to yeah going to Cape to get married. She's supposed to be a city hall. I started the chase when I got to Logan Airport. Uh, I found a trooper that I know. I said, "Have you seen Kate Jackson?" I don't know who she is, but Jackie Kennedy's upstairs. <laughs> and I said, "Well, anyways, all of a sudden I, I we found out what airlines, and they walked in, and I said, "Hi, I'm from I'm from uh, Harold or whatever whatever it was." And I said, can I get a nice picture? She said, no. So I took the picture. <laughs> and, and then she came up and she pushed me against, she didn't push me hard because I walked back. I could have I could have taken her. Anyway, <laughs> she pushed me back against the wall. She says, you're a real asshole. And I said, thank you. And, and Andrew, <laughs> and Andrew, and Andrew, her, her husband-to-be, Got slapped by the trooper who was a, a high school buddy of mine. <laughs> so he says, you come back to get me. Kevin, wheelchair. Well, I think this might have been the first wheelchair uh, race at the. Uh, this is when we were at the Prudential, and they ended at the Prudential. Winners and losers. This guy and this guy were racing for second, or third, or for whatever it was. He fell. Patty Lyons. Anybody remember her? Cat Cat Catalano. She was favored to win when the woman from Australia won. She was not happy. <laughs> Just a pretty picture. Once in a while, I make them. <laughs> and this is old. My daughter loves this picture. So this is going to be 40 something years old. This is a Friday night, uh, Thursday night, Friday morning. I got in the car at 1130 and I heard a call from the Boston police that uh, there's a guy hanging out a window and he wants the media. So I went down there and I said to the sergeant, hey, you know, in the Herald, uh, you want me to go up and talk to him? He said, sure. So I went upstairs at the hallway, second. Second floor, it must be second floor. And he's in the window, and this guy is doing sit-ups in the window. Look at his arms. And of course, I took a picture before I started talking to him. And um, I reached out, I said, come on, I'll help you in. He grabbed my hand. I thought he was trying to pull me through the window. I had to brace myself against the window frame. And finally, I broke my hands free. He's OK. He, I mean, he came in. It was a very warm night. Remember when the Tobin Bridge got crushed? Oh, yeah. 73? How would you remember, Scott? You're a kid. I remember that. We were coming back from the cake that day. Okay. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Rolling Stones? Yeah. This is at, um, at uh, Worcester Airport. They were in uh, Brookfield at a studio for a week. We were there every day. And then finally, they went to the airport. We got them. Everybody, all the other photographers were inside. I waited outside and I got the best pictures. This is where I went to high school in Revere. You're supposed to laugh. <laughs> this is uh, Dorchester, Savin Hill Ave. Uh, call came in. This is back when the MDC police were, were still working. And the call came in that the uh, cruiser could see a fire on Savin Hill. I raced down there and, and this woman and the man the people were bringing mattresses. The ladder truck was a long way off. I was there. I kept switching lenses between a 135 and a 35. I didn't know if they were going to jump. They finally went in. I forget if they came down the ladder or they got them from inside, but it was a big, a big, I don't want to call it a tenement, but a big tenement. Three people died on the other side of the building. This is a good friend of mine, a firefighter. What did he say? I got a charge out of this fire. He hit the, uh, the ladder truck. It touched the wires. This is um, Dorchester was at the top of the street. And I, I was the first one. Well, I, I was in there early and I walked right in the building and uh, they had that, uh, I'm going to call it a pickle job, but there was this barrel and I climbed up in the barrel. And I, I mean, you know, nowadays they shoot you for going in. And the cop that walks in happened to be my neighbor. Uh, what was her name? Walter Fahey, our neighbor. And I walk, walked in and he goes like this. And he didn't say anything. <laughs> Suffolk down, stable fire. I went to three or four stable fires at Suffolk Downs, and then none of them turn out well. 
the T, the T has not stopped, it didn't start <laughs> crashing today. This is uh, Logan Airport Station. My mother was on that train. I did not see her, but I found out afterward. She's okay. Oh. This is an Asian woman on Chauncey Street down by Jordan Rash, and there was a Friday afternoon and she went out on the ledge. And oh. Bob Mackey, he's a, uh, he's a, he was a Salem guy, Boston firefighter, Salem guy. She was 92. This is um, South Boston. This is a firefighter's daughter. He was on the ladder truck and the call came for his house was on fire. And uh, he, this is his daughter he rescued and this is him rescuing his wife. And, and his house eventually, I'm not laughing, but I am. He was a part-time electrician. His house finally burned to the ground. <laughs> this was uh, Copley Square. And I took this picture uh, of this guy and it's, uh, of this uh, wheelchair guy cleaning for the ramp and he, someone walked by and says, ah, propaganda. This is across from the globe. This was a lot of fun because it was across from the globe and this woman from Somerville got her arm broken in a mugging, you know, per, 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 purse snatching. And it was fun because it was across from the globe and they got nothing. <laughs> this is, um, her name is... Um, Gonna help me. Anyway, I'll think of it. Anyway, this is 1977 or 79. And um, 20 years in, in, in the early 2000s, I got a uh, I got a note, I got an email from a woman, this little girl who lost her family. She said, I think they took this picture. And then um, the mother died and a brother, maybe I forget exactly. She wrote a book out of the ashes. And we became friends and we did a story, Chronicle did a story with her when um, this guy rescued her, did a story where she met him at the scene of the fire. I arranged it. I can't think of her name, this is awful. Anyway, the daughter Hannah took this picture. I stopped in Wilmington five years ago. Hudson Hamilton. Dog in here. Yeah. And the deputy uh, said when he got there, the chief showed up and they, and they said, you gotta save him. You could leave a person out there, but if you leave a dog out there, everybody's gonna be honest. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Vernon, right? Moose and Woven. We were out front of, front of uh, Robin out in front of our house, out the back window. Osprey, right? What's the name of the restaurant? Village. Huh? The village. Oh, the village. Thanksgiving at the village. <laughs> Deer and Southie. Pandas in Washington. A bird that escaped from uh, Brookline Village and ended up uh, for a week. We chased it. It was on the porch of a uh, of a house in uh, Brookline. And I went back there every day till they finally captured it. Uh, this is the Saugus uh, eagle last year. One of them, the the, uh, the baby, the eaglet. Bear in Middleton. Bear is uh, at um, Stoneham Zoo. Fox in, um, trapped in uh, Woodward Ave. Woodward Ave, yeah, in Rileside. Now, where, where would you see a black squirrel? What city? Cambridge You got it. Morning breakfast. Owl, this owl, I'm not giving you a location, but it's nearby. <laughs> this is sun, one of my sunrises. Another one. I think this is behind Bill and Bob's. Raquel Welsh, 1972. It was two years ago when they made the movie on Main Street, on uh, on uh, Rantoul Street. Um, Me in 83. Gronk got his hay shave for the cancer thing. Uh, we were we were part of the flag uh, dropping ceremony at uh, at Fenway. That's Debbie. Me and Gronk. These guys are pretty big. Let me tell you. <laughs> 
Jimmy Kimmel? It's a blimp that landed in Manchester. <laughs> Blasi and uh, um, why? That's, that's our grandson, his first scanner. <laughs> the cover of our book, Debbie and I book. Schubert. Schubert. Tail end of a banking day. <laughs> <laughs> this is 1969 Shore Road Beach. Had a nude in. I was up in the uh, sand dunes with my clothes on. I ended up with poison ivy. <laughs> and I'm done. <laughs> So we're going to see if there's questions uh, from the virtual group first, and Abby will let us know. Yes, can you hear me? I can. Okay, so Vin asks, I see you used my pics of you in front of the Herald during the day it closed to be brought by, bought by Murdoch. Is that correct? Is it Vin? Is that what you said the name was? Vin, V-I-N. Vin says you used his photos where? You know what? I'm 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 actually too hot. I'm, I think I'm done. I'm sweating like a pig. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. No, that's okay. It's it's very warm up here. We'll have we'll have him send that answer. Okay. Um. So, anyways, thank you. That was really phenomenal. <laughs> 